The dawn of civilization. Primitive. Dangerous. Exciting. The handwriting is on the wall. If the human race is ever going to amount to anything, it needs the most civilized caveman I have ever seen. Ah, look who's come out of his cave. Hi, it's Jared here from Cave Dweller Music, and I'm joined today by Jono from Dr. Colossus. Hi, Jono, how are you? Good, Jared. You're also joined by my dog Wombat, which is barking in the background as well. <laughs> Always happy to have dogs on board. Yeah, I'll, I'll, um, is this the, do you keep the video of this or just the audio? Uh, it's going to be just audio. So there you go. Oh, no need for me to hold him up and no. show him off to the world. Uh, the audience right. can hear him though. Absolutely. If you want to just get him to bark a few more times to make sure his microphone's working, that'd be great. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, so I've got a short amount of time with you, Jonah, so I don't want to waste any. Um, That's my fault. That's no, my no, no. Fault. It's my fault too. Uh, do you want to just give us a bit of a quick rundown on Dr. Colossus, who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it, and any yep. other dot points you want to chuck in there? We're a bunch of guys that were playing in loads of other bands since we were young, and um, we were always playing in heavy bands, um, and we always took ourselves too seriously. And eventually we decided to start a band for laughs and um ironically it was probably the most successful of the bands that we uh <laughs> had tried to start in the past so um yeah we've we've kept through to today our original drummer Nath um left us left the earth about five years ago and um the the band kind of continued on as a sort of uh, a way to can keep him going as well and and also just to keep us all sane. Awesome. Awesome. Mm. And you're now running as a four piece. I think originally it was just you and Nate, but you've expanded yeah. as as the sound's grown. Yeah, we were a duo. Then um Mike, our bass player, came in for uh the first record for the dank. And then um after Nate um passed away after a sort of a, a little while of of break um josh who was an old school friend uh and friends of nace and my brother joel joined the band so um yeah it was a family affair really <laughs> awesome awesome and josh is from dune Eater, is that correct yeah he plays in dune Eater, um yep. and then he's sort of played in tons of different bands in the past as well played with dallas frasca for a while um i did a lot of overseas touring with her and yeah yeah and um mike's in a few other bands as well from what i what i can see yeah mike plays with um red row rodriguez and he's in a demons um red red's the sort of um synonymous with the sound um sound guy scene and um <laughs> also runs like a a collective, the Moona Arts Collective out in Bry. And um, Mike was also in another band called Dukes of Deliciousness that are <laughs> um, on a kind of uh, indefinite hiatus. But if they ever fire up again, I'll be front and centre. Awesome. And uh, obviously you guys are, are pretty busy with Dr. Colossus these days. You, uh, you're you always playing somewhere. Mm. you've always got something coming up I, i'm just having a look now you've got uh actually a, a fifth year anniversary of the dank that you're uh mm. doing some shows for so yes yeah. yep go on yeah it's um five years of that um and and kind of i mean after that album was put out originally it was only a couple of months after that that nath passed away so that the five years of the dank is also a five five years of um his anniversary is his passing as well so um kind of a kind of a double-edged sword a little bit with celebration and and um commemorating um those five years yeah yeah um and you're having you've just had a repressing done of the dank or well, is that out now or is that ready to go soon or yeah so we're um we remastered it and have pressed it on um like on gatefold records and with different colors and stuff um and they're available they're going to be out in 
start of October. Um, just because vinyl is a bit slower these days to get cracking mm -hmm. and we're lazy and slow as well. Um, and it can get, yeah, there's pre-orders for that up at the moment. So awesome. people can, people can kind of, yeah, if they missed out on the dank the first time around, they've got an option of getting it this time. Awesome. And um, that's just local distribution or you'll be uh, getting picked up somewhere else or uh, that one's that one's just local um in australia like we've after the last record we've kind of that cemented the the reason of just doing it ourselves um like we yeah we until someone gives me a reason not not to um that checks out um i think we'll continue doing local stuff ourselves um okay and then distributing maybe in bulk to separate stores um, at, at, at like a, you know, a store rate or wholesale rate, but we just deal with it all ourselves. And then our merch guys ship it. And um, yeah, awesome. means we've got a bit more, a bit more control over the whole thing and can kind of follow up on stuff. If, if anything's going wrong, we can, we can be the ones that are, that are involved in it. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so going back right to the start, what was the, uh, what was the, the key decision, um, when you guys were sitting around and went, Hey, why don't we, uh, write songs about the Simpsons? I think we were just, we were like at a point where it, Nathan and I had been, Nathan and I were playing in another band and, um, we were kind of like reaching the end of a tour with that band. And we were like, what's next? Like, what are we, what are you, what are we up to next once this is done? Um, and so that was just a conversation about like, let's start a project um, that's like really heavy stuff, like really slow. I think we were playing kind of a bit more like deserty, stonery stuff at the time. And we'd both been listening to tons of goat snake or something probably. And, <laughs> and we were just like, what's the slowest thing we can do? what's the dumbest name it can have what's the biggest stupidest thing it can be like what 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 is the end of end of that spectrum look like <laughs> and then um yeah like i think the name colossus kind of came up and then dr colossus and then what about dr colossus but all the songs are based on episodes of the simpsons so simpsons <laughs> themed one i'm like perfect let's do that um and that was kind of it just like wrote some songs to that were going to be really dumb. And I tried to write lyrics that would make Nath laugh. And um, we just sort of, yeah, went from there. It's funny how quickly it took off from there as well. Um, I think we've chatted about it in the past when we've uh, crossed paths about how it all sort of went from being a, a bit of a laugh to being in, in all seriousness or at least as serious as it could be in a very quick mm. uh, in a very quick succession yeah i mean it, it's sort of um i think it's one of those things that was like i mean it wasn't as quick as oakley doakley yeah that was instant it was instantaneous but it was definitely like um i don't know the the concept of having like the the the, the ability to just be like this is simpsons theme band immediately people want to check that out if i mainly to see if it sucks and how much <laughs> it sucks um and then b if they think oh this is actually good it, it, it's more of a surprise and they'll they'll probably then hold on to it for a little bit longer but we've got this like obsession as an audience as as audiences where we want to we want to see how bad someone else is going to stink at something a little bit <laughs> so i think a big part of it's that yeah this Do is you... going to be shit I, i'm going to hate this and then someone will check it out and go oh okay it's actually it's actually a good band it's just they've <laughs> sabotaged themselves by making all the songs about episodes well i guess it it could be seen as being the opposite of sabotage because it's a point of reference that just about everybody on the planet has. There's mm. not, I mean, good luck finding somebody that hasn't seen at least one episode of the Simpsons, whether they've liked it or not. 
Um, it's that big a part of popular culture that everybody can at least have some tiny link to what you guys are doing. So I guess that's um, that's really open the door there, whether people love it or hate it. But it, yeah, I, that's I, true. I, I do often Everyone's see their own relationship with that show. <laughs> I, I have seen a few times, I think even um, James who runs Cave Dweller might have been guilty of this, of saying, oh, I checked it out just because of the Simpsons theme and was actually surprised by the musicianship. Do you mm. do you kind of get sick of hearing that or do you take that as no. kind of a badge of honour? No, I don't get sick of that <laughs> at all. Like, um, yeah, like we didn't really... Um, I think I'd be the same if I was an audience member, you know, like, um, I don't think we're not, we're not like, um, <laughs> I don't think we're necessarily going to appeal to a Simpsons fan that doesn't like music. Um, yeah. because the, the, at the core of it, we're trying to write good songs and we're trying to write, um, good riffs and, yeah. and, and it, we're, we're trying to put on a good live show. So, <laughs> I think it's more that uh, the nice part is those that do kind of end up falling into it because usually they do come from both worlds. They already like metal and then they've, they've got the background of the Simpsons. And even if they've only got a little bit of kind of Simpsons knowledge, they kind of rewarded a little bit by it. Yeah. Mm. One of the things that's kind of, interesting um it's well deserved but you guys even though you know you've obviously got this niche thing going on and you're now um dressing up for shows as well um you've kind of risen to the top of the the melbourne if not the australian metal scene you guys are constantly headlining shows and um i i think at, at the start where there may have been a little bit of sort of tongue-in-cheek about it it's now it's it's a legitimately serious you know metal band mm. it's um you know i i think people are definitely seeing past the simpsons thing now and just going yeah these guys are actually just writing metal that kicks ass mm. yeah i mean i i don't think i don't i don't feel like we're anywhere near the top of the metal kind of scene but um i guess it's more that we're trying to take opportunities seriously when they come up so even if even if the show's a joke and even if the the aim of the game is to take the piss a bit and get a laugh, like I, I'm, I'm just as happy if people are laughing at the stuff that, than if they actually are kind of cranking a record and kicking back and just being like, I love this riff. Like, um, but I think any opportunity that's popped up to do something right our, our our approach has always been that like if we take it seriously it makes the joke funnier so <laughs> like like when the, the last record came up we were like it the the merch guys that we worked through they were like you should log it for aria chart like for the charting <laughs> and we're like what's the point and they're like you never know and it's the stupidest name of an album ever can we so uh, may- can we just get you to uh sound off the full name there or yeah, do so we, we have call, time or yeah 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 we called the album i'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt and my butt smells and i like to kiss my own butt and the, and the aim of the game was we wanted a name that took up the entire spine of the record you know <laughs> um and so yeah when when we put that out the merch crew were just like log it for the charts and as luck would have it we ended up charting um <laughs> like we, we we got a top it was top five in the Australian ARIA charts it was in the top 20 for like the world ARIA charts in Australia. So it was just like, I guess another re- reminder to like do it properly. Yeah. And, and it will be even more ridiculous when something goes right. Like, yeah. Now, over just, the- just the approach. <laughs> Have you had any sort of negative kickback at all from, uh, from anyone associated with the show or has it always just been, you know, their comedy writers, their comedy team, they can kind of see the funny side of it or do they just not care or you, you probably don't know about it. I, I wouldn't have assumed that they would know. Um, it's only like a pretty niche kind of group that would have heard of us, I reckon overseas particularly. Um, and whilst they may have been tagged in a few things, 
I'm, I'm sure there's lots of um, cultural, um, you know, homages to The Simpsons out there. Um, so it, it's probably just one of those things, unless they loved metal <laughs> and stoner rock. I reckon the chance, the chances are low. The chances are they've heard of Oakley Dokley because they're a little bit more kind of immediately memeable and a, yeah. a little bit more immediately a joke kind of approach. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we haven't copped any negativity. Um, I'd kind of welcome it. I, I think it'd be nice. I imagine it would boost the profile even further. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what's next for you guys? Obviously, you've got the uh, the anniversary shows coming up. You've got the repressing. Yeah. Um, did I say somewhere that you were having a pressing of the current album over in Europe? Yeah, um, a label called Black Farm put out um, the new the new record um, in Europe, uh, in France, and they sold out of that, which is amazing. amazing. So yeah we've got um we're probably going to do a u.s pressing of that yeah and then the dank will um we'll yeah we'll, we'll do that pressing in october ourselves we might do it we might do a, Euro, might do a Euro, Europe, european pressing of the dank with black farm but um at this stage just just the australian setup has there been enough international interest in the project to get you on a plane at any point? Yeah. Yeah. I think the hardest part for us is actually finding the time amongst ourselves to, to do it. Um, but yeah, we've got, um, we've got, we're sort of constantly been chatting to a booking agent in Europe to go and do Europe. Europe's probably the easiest in a way to go and play shows at without, requiring like crazy visa setup yeah um us you can do but it's just one of those things where you've got to kind of go and play for free and you can't declare any incomes and there's a few other issues like that if you're not getting a visa yeah um so yeah i think we'll probably try and do europe at some point even just for a short a, a short run just you know not disrupt yeah. our own our own lives too much um, but still go and try and play some club shows to no one. It'll be good. <laughs> no, I'm sure it wouldn't be to no one. I'm sure it'd be well received. I'm sure that there'd be yeah, a, yeah. A it's hard for to it. it's hard to know. I mean, I, I I I kind of think that you've got to do you got to pay your dues when you go and do those shows. Like, I, it, it wouldn't phase me if if we were playing to three people, we'd still be stoked to go and play over there i think i'm sure those three people will be having a great time anyway that's uh, right right i know we're watching the clock here Jono, so i'll let you yeah. go but um You're good thank you so much for joining us and i know that there's already a big following amongst the cave dweller music fans so hopefully we can spread that reach a little bit further and um yeah really excited to see what you guys do next that's awesome man thanks for the chat and um yeah thanks for uh picking a picking a sort of uh a hole in my schedule to be able to to, to get it done yeah awesome well thanks for having us thanks Pleasure. mate cheers take care no See worries ya. bye